Okay, hi everybody. So we're going to do something a little bit different and a little bit new today. Um, I have Chris Lumley, uh, one of the owners of Cleck, and he is someone who is one of the most knowledgeable people and one of the most passionate people about car seat safety that I know. So if you have any questions or are interested about car seat safety or just want to get nerdy about car seats, um, I hope you'll enjoy this interview. And so it's in the middle of COVID-19 right now, and we are talking together both from our homes, and I really hope you like this interview. Hi, Chris. Hey, Ellie. How you doing? How are you feeling? <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, a, li a little homebound at this point, but you know what? All things considered, everyone's healthy in, in my family, so uh, it's a, I consider that a big win. That's, that's so great. We're, and we're doing all right. Yeah. How you doing? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm living every day one at a time, same. I'm homebound with my family, you know, at, like you trying to run a business and also trying to like take care of my family and how my family take care of me at this time is just, just one of the craziest times. And so, um, and how is Cleck doing like during COVID? How are you guys sort of handling the COVID situation, et cetera? It's crazy. We've, um, again, everyone at the company is healthy. Uh, we've had to shut down clearly. Um, so, so that is good, but the, the, I've had so many conversations with people and it's, you know, everybody's struggling no matter, you know, what your, what your, you know, is it personal health? Is it, you know, keeping your company alive? Is it, um, you know, figuring out, you know, rent with your landlord, like everyone's got some form of issue. And um, we've kind of done our part um, by, you know, shutting everything down. And I think everything has to, the quicker we can all do this, the quicker we can get on with things. Um, so we have shut our company down for, I want to say two weeks now. Um, we did a little earlier. So everyone working from home um, and really just trying to keep it going. I mean, it's, uh, you got to kind of, reinvent how you do things a little you know that um you know trying to keep stores trying to keep selling uh, what well, the same time trying to keep everyone healthy so um it's that balancing act that 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 everyone has to do and we're kind of trying to do our part too hmm. well i'm glad everything's healthy Every, everybody's healthy and um you know you were one of the first people to reach out to me to see how collect even despite the fact that you guys are shut down you reach out to me. How can I help support Magic Beans? How can I support retailers? And we just really appreciate that. But I uh, just, like I said, I think that's really awesome. Uh, but so, you know my, it's, but but it's people like you guys that kind of keep the economy going too. So um, we all got to pitch in to help each other um, and understand how we can help one another through this because this is new. There's no playbook for this, right? So, yeah. um, anyways, but yeah. just just want to see how you're doing. Yeah, I there definitely is, but I think that it's great to see. Have you seen other examples? Like, what are the things that you've seen in the industry or in business of the, of ways that businesses help one another to support each other? I I, I think that I mean the, I'm really focused on us right now. I mean, everyone's trying to um, salvage their own business, keep everyone employed, um, and I think the biggest hurdle we have right now as an industry is actually um, people going into stores um, versus, you know, kind of buying online and kind of changing that model, at least for the next little bit to, to help retailers out by being able to shift direct, but also how do you, how do you kind of communicate that message? Like you're an expert, people are coming in to see you to learn about those products. And it's, you know, things like this conversations like this, how can we create that, it, that conversation online um, while people aren't allowed to go out of their houses because people still need car seats, people still need mattresses, people still need strollers. Um, so it's kind of trying to reinvent that conversation, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think that I de definitely try to reinvent this conversation. And I think that, I think one of the good things about this is that, you know, obviously with us at Magic Beans, we are passionate about social media. We have this giant YouTube channel and, you know, we've been doing this for years, but there are so many smaller specialty retailers in the baby industry that are generational businesses. They were started 70 years ago and they basically have been doing things in one particular way um, for so many years. But I think the really cool thing is that it's forcing these businesses to modernize, to hop on social media, to learn how to do this stuff. So my hope is that at the end of this, that 
a lot of these specialty retailers, if they make it through, and I hope they all do, they'll be even stronger. They'll start working on their websites and like have like more of a platform to sell and be and be successful after this. So that's that's my hope for all of the the specialty retailers out there. Hundred percent, couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, so a little, let's talk a little bit about you and about Click. Um, so let's can we just talk a little bit about your your origin story? Where you guys, anything you want. Great. Awesome. We have all the time in the world because we are home. <laughs> um, so you, you run the company with your, with your wife right yeah. now. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. And, and so did you guys always work together or did you, how did that all come, come about? So, so no, so I, I work for Magna, which I'm um, actually really proud to work from now. They're doing a lot of, uh, they're retooling. I got to give them a little shout out right now because they're retooling. Sure. Um, some of their plants to to kind of help build masks and and um, uh, and, and other equipment to help out. But I've worked for Magna and uh, was building when the automotive industry was kind of going the other way. Um, I uh, they asked me to with a smaller group of people to kind of work on um, use of vital assets. Um, and we were approached by and I'll dovetail back to Jenny. This kind of how it started. We were approached yeah. by a uh, safety advocacy group because no kids weren't using booster seats. I think the usage rate was, I don't know, in the teens. Um, and it was a leading cause of death for booster seat age kids. So they said, hey, build us a booster seat that kids will sit in. And I kind of jumped on that project, um, built our backlist, they commercialized a, a backlist booster seat. Um, that was kind of 2006. By you know 2009, it, you know, they were a big company. We were tiny. They wanted to just kind of shut it down and I'd spent all that time building it. Um, so Jenny and I uh, decided to you know, take a loan out and buy it out. And that's when we own it. Jenny started kind of moonlighting. She was doing real estate, commercial real estate. And uh, she came on along with one other employee. And that's when we started to work together and, and owning it. And now I work for her. It's really kind of how it works. So. That's like, like, like every husband, right? That's exactly, that's exactly that's exactly right. That's right. You know, during the COVID, so Sherry, who you know, we are also like a husband and wife team. So she is definitely like pulled back into the business, and it's just so great to if it can work. And you know, it's, you know, there there are pluses and minuses and challenges to working with your partner, but if it works, it works great. And you know, I've been watching you guys. From what you guys, what I see from you guys, you guys do a great job working together, and you seem like it's like a great partnership. Well, she's, she's really good at the things that I'm not and vice versa. So Same. what, you know, what makes us work as a couple also helps us work as a business. At the same time, it's, um, y there's, there's no divide. And I really, it's, it's, it's this whole, um, uh, what is it uh, the, the, the work life balance, that whole thing I struggle with a bit because there is, that, yeah. that's theoretical. Um, is, and, and especially when you, when you work together, there's no divide between like at 2 a.m. You may have a question going, Hey, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you do X, Y, and Z? And it's like, well, you know, would you ask your partner who you weren't kind of lying next to that question at 2 a.m.? So there's just, you know, the rules don't apply, but it, it makes for a great business, right? Yeah. It's, it's symbiotic, if you will, on, on how you work in the, in the, uh, in a professional manner. And ten years, or and congratulations on being ten years in business. Uh, ten years later, you learn to go back to sleep at two a.m. and ask a question in the morning or at some other time. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm having trouble learning that lesson because um, work never turns off. But uh, yeah, you know, but yeah, but um, I try. That's it is what it is. What it is. It is what it is. Is what it is. So so you started with the Ollie, this backless booster seat, and then. Did you ever think when you started with the Ollie that you'd end up with a full line of car seats? Like how, like, tell me about the, how that sort of evolved. Honestly, the, the, I was in the automotive sector. So all of our focus was, um, you know, automotive best practices, you know, craftsmanship, um, um, you know, on the, on the innovation and technology side. And I kind of, if you will, stumbled in because an opportunity presented itself on, on booster seats. So, uh, 2000 Cooper was my son, who's now 14, um, was just born. So I didn't, I didn't know anything about car seats. Um, I can tell you, I mean, the number of mistakes I made with my first car seat. So I understand parents going through this. Um, it, it was frankly more of an opportunity that I had to 
um, create a business and, and on, on frankly, learn on someone else's dime for a few years, which is, which is great. You get your bumps and bruises. Um, but when we created the, the booster seat, now the premium booster seat segment didn't exist, right? We had, you know, the rigid latch system that was built like a real vehicle seat, uh, the, you know, it was 2X to 3X the price point of other seats. Um, so at the time was just trying to figure out how do we, uh, how do we create a, a, a brand or a space in this mat? I mean, child seat segment is huge. Um, so at that time it was just, you know, how do we exist here? But then I realized quickly as booster seats, you know, we have to convert someone from another brand. Um, you know, they used another convertible seat brand and, and frankly, you know, fast forward seven years, 10 years, sorry. Um, we had the same problem with the infancy, you know, we're converting someone from another brand. So it, it quickly, uh, I quickly realized that we had to create a full suite of child seats. Otherwise we're always having to convert people from another brand. Um, so I knew we had to do it. It's just the, the kind of, it, it, it took some time, um, to do that when you're, when you're capitalizing it yourselves or with a small group of investors. Yeah, it's been, you know, we've been working with you since the very beginning and it's just been sort of amazing to watch you guys innovate and, and like you just said, you went kind of backwards from the normal way of doing it. Number one, doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you look at it, but right to go from booster to high back booster, you know, back to this high back convertible and now infant car seat in the other direction. But every single time it sounds like you have to sort of like take on another category that has already existed before and have to just sort of play with the big boys. Yeah. And, and I think if I had to do it again, I'd probably do it the same way because no one was really focused on the booster seat segment at that time. So we were able to kind of create a, a, a segment, a high end booster seat that didn't exist. We were able to take a lot of our automotive know-how. I mean, if you look at Uber, Uber is a real vehicle seat size for your child. It's got a whole metal frame. It's got the, you know, the magnesium frame. Um, it has the steel headrest rods, just like you have in your car. So we were able to approach designing a car seat differently. Um, and that really allowed collect child seats to be very different than other seats that are out there. And I'm pretty proud of what we've done in each segment in that we're, um, you know, we're safety leaders in each segment and it's our approach to how we build the child seat. Um, our whole thing was we wanted to build the one that we would use for our own kids. And I listen, that's not going to be, um, you know, where we're producing 500,000 seats a year to the masses. That's not what we wanted. We wanted a seat that had all of the best safety features from around the world. We're able to accomplish that by building it like a real vehicle seat rather than a child seat. It's something that didn't, that, you know, didn't look bad in the back of your car. Um, which I, you know, the aesthetic was important to us. So kind of when we approach a seat, it was let's here are all the things we want in it. The cost is what it is rather than we have to hit a certain price point. And there's a lot of parents out there like, that, like us out there. So, um, yeah, that, that's how we, that's how we approached all of our child seats and built up brand. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, those seats are obviously beautiful and, you know, we used, um, you know, an Ollie in our, in our, with our kids, like multiple Ollies. I think lots of people have multiple Ollies in their, in their houses. Thank God. So that, that's really great. And so let's just fast forward. Let's just talk a little bit right now about the link, um, which is your latest car seat. Um, and if folks want to ask questions about like the foom for the flow, they can drop a comment below. They can get in touch with us and we can um, answer your questions and ha have Chris help you answer some questions as well. Um, Cause they're foom and flow. And oh, when he said Uber before, by the way, it's O O B R Uber, the high back booster, not Uber U B E R the it's, it's homonym or homophone. One of the other things. Anyway, talking about the Ling. So you came out with the Ling last year, and this was under development for a long time. Can you tell, tell me a little bit about the development of the Ling? Why you created the Ling? Um, well, uh, obviously, why we created the Ling is you know that back to my earlier comment is to get um, parents from day one using a collect product and into the family. Um, I think the 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 focus for us on Ling is, I and mean, for any car seat is safe. It's always we want to be the safest seat um, or, or have the most safety features available in the seat. And the safety performance, and we publish our crash test results, as you're aware, um, is critical to us above anything. So we looked at the base, which is where all the technology in our seat is. 
and said, okay, you know, what uh, you're going to, if you're going to stall in the outboard position, you're going to install with rigid latch. Um, if you're going to install in the center, you need a seat belt install. So how do we provide best in class installation uh, for both models? So that's why we have the rigid latch system and the belt tensioning system. Um, uh, the use of a load leg, which you see, you're starting to see a lot more in North America now, um, but exists in a lot of high end seats in, in, in Europe and always exist with a rigid, a true rigid latch system to get the benefit of the load leg so that base doesn't move. Um, that was absolutely something we wanted to put into our seat. And with, with those two features, um, you actually get that literally our, our, our safety performance is untouchable. Um, we, actually just got rated, I want to say, I found out a week ago, so I'm not sure if it was a week ago, um, for on Consumer Reports as um, the highest safety performance and ease of use. So a lot of, you know, why we wanted to do what we did is being recognized, which is great. Um, but the other part on the safety side that people really don't pay attention to is the recline angle. Um, and Ellie, you've installed a ton of car seats. Um, you, you know, for, for, for those that have, they'll get this, they install it and they go, oh, the recline angle's off. And then, you know, I got to prop something underneath or change the recline angle. So you're installing several times, um, and you may not be able to get the proper, um, angle for your child. And when your child has no head control, you got to be at 40 degrees, you know, 40 to 45 degrees, um, or it becomes a safety issue. So we developed a recline system that you can actually recline after you install and it always gives you that proper angle because if you look at your back seat you have a few cars um you'll see the angle of the of the seat cushion maybe flat another one will be angled and you, you get about a roughly 12 degree difference between a flat seat and a and a deep bucket seat so you need that recline adjustment so you can always get the proper angle uh, in, in regard, in whatever vehicle you install. So for us is if your outboard position, center position, flat seat, recline seat, you're always going to get an easy, proper install. And I think that's what makes Ling awesome mm -hmm. is the ability to do that. Yeah. The fact that they recommend use, they have, I guess when I was, became a car seat tech, use a rolled up towel or a pool noodle and all these other gadgets and weird things to get a, a proper angle. Just always seemed kind of crazy and the fact that the like other infant car seats don't have the the ability to angle and the ability to angle in every direction sometimes with a base you can angle it back but you can't angle it up but with the ling you can obviously angle you could um in uh, you can angle it in all these different types of, you know, various positions. You can always get the proper recline angle. Right. And that's, always. that's that key. It's almost like our guarantee, if you will, yeah. um, for it, the seat. It, it, one of the benefits that we stumbled on, and I love to say we thought about this, but it, it was luck. It has <laughs> our, <laughs> our, our rigid, the rigid latch, some latches, uh, ratchets back. Um, i show you later, maybe, but, um, is it allows it, 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 if you will, sucks the seat back towards the rear of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you almost an extra three inches of room, leg room um, for the occupant in the front, which is huge. And that's something we got to start talking about a little more, but we just, um, you know, it, it, it's another kind of best in class for, uh, for our seat. You have a link right there behind you. Could yeah. you want to just grab it? See, maybe, maybe sure. we can like demonstrate that. So I'm going to fold the, uh, what Chris is saying is that you, um, the the angle are, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, infant car seats are facing rear facing. Um, all infant car seats are rear facing. And so the back of the car seat will, sometimes will bang up against, or not bang up against, touch up against either the rear sure. passenger or rear driver's side. So just, uh, I'll, just for visual sake, you can see where my hand is here. Imagine that's the, just use the base as the position, because I have to adjust the, ratch, the latch system. So uh, this is gonna push against the seat back. So if, if try the latch system here. If the latch system, can you see that latch system here? Mine, yep. kind of yep. my name's in the yep. way, okay. Yep, you got it. Um, so if that's installed and here's your back, you, the seat is further um, this way, it's, it's sticking out further. But because this, 
ratchets back, it sucks the seat backwards in the vehicle and gives you a lot more um, room to put your, your front seat back. Does that make any sense? I'm working with yep. Very you small are, window on a kitchen so, table here. You're doing such a great job on your kitchen table. Uh, it makes it makes sense to me, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it keeps that closer to the back seat. Can you also, while you're there, um, show the actual swiveling or not swiveling the the movement of the of the base of the sure? So, so quickly, so here's the rigid latch. Here's the belt tensioning system that takes all the slack out of the belt in the center position, so you don't have to kneel on it. And then you have let me flip this up a little. Kind of, you see this recline bubble here? It tells you the different angles um, for the seat. So it's in this whole sled that the seat installs on reclines up and down. So I'll show you from this angle. So once the seat's installed, I can adjust the recline and it gives you up to 15 degrees of recline. So you get the, pro and the bubble will tell you when you're in that proper angle. You drop the seat on, it's, it's, it's really dummy proof, if you will, um, to get that, that proper install and proper, proper angle. Um, is there anything about the seat itself that you may want to tell us about? Sure. The actual seat sure. Uh, here, let me take this. So the seat, I mean, the seat itself here, how do I back this up a bit? I think the biggest thing that we wanted to do was to provide, um, well, first you have your, your European belt pass, so you can travel and install it um, without the base. Um, but is the one hand release? So a lot of seats to come off of a stroller, you need to push a button on both sides and then lift up. And we've designed it to the maxi cozy adapter, which effectively exists on every single stroller out there. Um, and then you have the one hand release so you can just lift up. So that was the, you know, getting back to your question about what are the key features we wanted to design into a seat. We wanted to have a lightweight seat, weighs nine pounds, um, and you have a one hand release that you can remove from the stroller. Other little things are obviously is you have the extendable canopy. Um, you have the, sorry, let me close the belt all the way here. You have the peekaboo window in the back. Um, you have, actually here, I, the, the, um, the insert. We have a very unique insert. I don't know, Let's see if I can open this here. That's got, uh, can you see that little seat? If you will, so I'll, I'll, I'll it's got a little. Seen. It's got um, so there, the the insert has a bump, mm -hmm. and it was designed. Um, it was designed with, uh, um, you know, working with the medical community, if you will, um, to create to deliver proper posture for um, for newborns. So the fit on newborns for tiny newborns for a seat is phenomenal because it lifts the child up and the, it has them seated, because what you don't want is a child kind of cradled, like rounded. And a lot of people think, oh, they look really comfortable. They can't breathe that way. So you need them sitting upright so it kind of um, opens their airways, uh, but also it props them up for the smaller child. So that insert, um, there's a lot of work that went into that and is a great uh, fit on premium. You know, what, you know, I've sold thousands of car seats in my career and it's like always so interesting to me that um, how many fine details there are in infant car seats and convertible car seats, especially in collect car seats that people are not always thinking about when they are, bought, you know, buying a car seat. It's these small details like the infant insert or of the other or the ability to install it with a seatbelt in the center of the back seat easily. These are things that, and I don't, and I understand it because consumers are coming in, they've never shopped for infant car seats before, they've never shopped for convertible car seats before, they don't actually know what questions to ask and what are the things that they should be looking for. I mean, I guess my question for you might be like, when you're shopping for um, car seats in general, is there... Like, is there, do you have a ranking of the things to think about when it comes to like shopping for a car seat? So, I mean, it's, it's very personal, um, on, and obviously I have a very educated opinion on it, but, um, it also is focused on, you know, here, why we put these features in our seat. I think first and foremost, um, when you're shopping for a car seat, you're shopping for all kinds of products and I, you know, your mattress and your car seat, 
Those are two, in my mind, your two most important virtues. Um, you know, I would, again, this is just you know, my personal industry, but I put the money in the mattress and not the, and not the crib. And I put the money in the car seat and not the stroller because I'm spending just all, you know, half of my day on a mattress um, as, a, as an adult as well too. But for a car seat, it's the thing that can save your child's life in the most dangerous thing you do every day. Those are just, that's just factual. So that's where I'd want to put my money. Um, and it's not necessarily that I w- I'm not going to say that the most expensive car seat is always the best one. That's, that's, not always the case, but generally speaking, um, there are, it costs more to put additional safety features in your product. And it's very important that the seat fits your car. So spend the time to, um, you know, talk to a CPS tech, go to a specialty store, understand these things, because I'm not going to sit here and say we're the best seat for everyone in every situation. That's not the case. Um, your, you have to look at your vehicle and what fits your vehicle properly and what fits your pro- child properly. But the things that I would look for for sure are uh, the load leg makes a unbelievable safety difference um, in the child seat. And please go, go to our website. We, we've actually published the, the showing the video and you can see it with your own eyes for everything about crash testing on, uh, on the impact of a load leg uh, uh, for an infant seat. Um, I am a huge proponent of rigid latch. Um, there are uh, there are benefits kind of from a side impact side uh, of it not moving. I think the less just physics, the less movement you have between your seat and the vehicle um, helps control that energy. I would look for energy absorbing systems, if you will, especially with your if you're working with the rigid latch, it allows you to kind of funnel some of that energy to an energy absorbing system. Um, um, I would look for stuff that and when you get to convertible, I would look for seats that you can kind of, I mean, generally speaking, most of them can rear face until 40 pounds. You want to rear face uh, as long as possible. Um, and those are really, I mean, really when it comes down to, it, 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 to safety, because that's what the seat is doing is, is, you know, looking to, for that one time you needed to save your kid's life. So I would look for the safest seat um, that that fits, that you can afford and that fits your lifestyle. Sure. No, that those are all really great suggestions. I'm sure people, people are going to find that so helpful. Um, so we should probably wrap up soon, but I have just like one, one more question. Um, and before I ask my question, um, you can, uh, is collectinc.com still your website? Collectinc.com is our website. Okay, Collectinc, uh, C-L-E-K-I-N-C. If I can put graphics in this, I will. Um, go check that out to find, see those crash test videos um, and all those different types of documentation that Collect has on their website. Um, you can buy all the Collect car seats from mbeans.com and our Magic Beans store um, with free shipping um, from Ling to Foom, Uber, Ali, Uber, all, all those guys. Um, and I thank you, um, Chris for spending some time with me. So my last question is, um, so we're all in this uh, crazy time right now with the world being sort of upside down. So, but where do you see Cleck going over the next couple of years? Where, what's, what's, what's your, what's your next steps besides like taking it day by day? So I, it's a bit of a difficult question given we're, uh, we had a plan a month ago. Um, but a bit unclear as to, you know, how the dust settles and what everything looks like. I mean, I think our, our, our focus right now, um, is to, uh, you know, is on our, is on our employees, um, is marketing what we have, um, is, you know, continuing the things we're doing, like, you know, our, our, our recycling program, um, we're consolidating our manufacturing here in North America. Our, all of our car seats are made in Canada and the U S. Um, it's really kind of focusing on, on keeping those and improving some processes during this time. Um, we will be adding additional products and refreshing products as we go um, and ideally expanding internationally. I'm just not sure uh, the, the time horizon on that sure. right now <laughs> since our focus on, on taking care of what we have and, and providing good customer service to our, uh, um, to our existing cloud customers. Awesome. And awesome. you're an existing Clack customer, buddy. So that's not just, you know, end consumer. It's, it's uh, to, you know, to all of our retailers and making sure 
everybody's there uh, at the end of this. So that, well, that's my short term plan. That sounds great. Just, um, just can you just tell me a little bit more, uh, remind everyone what your recycling program is? Uh, we actually, you can contact our, our, uh, our customer service, one 656 2462 I'm very impressed that I actually remember nice. that. I'm impressed. Uh, Hopefully that um, correct. To, <laughs> a, a, yeah, exactly. And, uh, or, or just, you know, log onto our website and, and it's actually automatic right there. Um, we, ha we actually have a car seat recycling program where we take all the seats back. Um, and they are all. Uh, broken down individual components. Some go back into uh, to other products, and other, frankly, are, are just are recycled as as uh, you know, like the plastic is reground, etc. Um, so, please contact us. Don't put your seats in a landfill. Send it back, and um, you know, we're creating an avenue for everyone to do the right thing. So, I think I have two way. pink camouflage ollies from seven years ago in my basement so i'll send them back to you <laughs> one one day you're going to see that camo just on a random product walking around you'll know yeah that, uh, that was yours so. yeah um well chris thank you so much for spending time with us um like i said go to collectinc.com go to mbeans.com for more information and um i hope you enjoy this video drop a comment below uh, email me your questions or questions at mbeans.com and stay safe everybody have a great day bye thanks ali stay safe